What's going on, everybody? I hope you're having a great Wednesday. Welcome back to the RGR Football Channel here on YouTube. My name's Daniel Harms, film analyst here. And I know there was a little bit of a wondering if we were going to have any film today because I had run out of my connection with the, the All-22 and then was able to finally get that back up this morning. So uh, I apologize for that possibly being a thing. But luckily, we are going to have our film room today. And we're talking a lot about the Chiefs offensive explosion. You know, Patrick Mahomes was insane in this game. The distribution of the ball all over the place. DeMarcus Robinson, Byron Pringle, McCole Hardman, Jarek McKinnon, Tyree Kill, and Travis Kelsey all made contributions to this game in one way or another. But the big thing for me is that it's all coming down to Patrick Mahomes, okay? Being the better player on the, the best player on the field. And the distribution there really tells you that he's starting to understand how to make the best of what he has and this whole talk about how the chiefs absolutely need a new a brand new third wide receiver option to be able to come up and take that that that, that step forward i think we're seeing that kind of help patrick mahomes is helping that become a root thing that doesn't have to happen they're doing a good job of distributing the ball and finding spaces in this offense to get their best players and some of their their role make the role players the ball and in good spaces to make those plays so one thing I wanted to talk about before we even got into the film is how good Mahomes was when he was blitzed again. Once again, I know his his grade wasn't very good, but he was 8 of 11 when he was blitzed for 79 yards and a touchdown. So you're still able to see what he does against the blitz. I think he took a sack on one of those, which is why his like PFF grade wasn't very good, but he was surgical, knowing where everything is. And that's part of this growth that we've seen, understanding the defense and kind of playing it out with the offense and all of this culminates with the ability to really start to run the ball and getting some of that with this offensive line moving. They did an excellent job all day, really, of getting excuse me of getting players in the best space possible. So let's go ahead and get into the film and really digest and dissect what the Chiefs did in this game against the Steelers to get themselves back in contention to be the best team in the NFL. All right, the very first play that we're going to look at is right after the fumble, returned for a touchdown. Steelers obviously did that after the Wildcat, not very well-executed play. But this is right off the bat. They come out and bring in some heat with a 21 personnel package, and they get the ball downfield for a 20-yard a gain nearly. Okay, So what do they do? How do they do this? What does this do, this play action? Okay, 21 personnel play action. All of this is what you need to see, okay? 21 personnel, two running backs, and a tight end, okay? That's all 21 personnel is, no big deal. So what they're going to do, run this play-action game, and you're going to see Tyreek Hill kind of run to the inside and then find space to the outside here. And you're going to have McCole Hardman kind of run this wheel and go. And it's basically just a three-man route, and you're going to have Jarek McKinnon go to the flat off of that, okay? It's just a very simple design, to three-man route. Get the ball into open space. This is where I saw Patrick Mahomes take some of his steps forward, specifically here, because this is, he's rolling out to his right a little bit here, and the ball's got to get in between a window over here, somewhere across this, this, this guy's going to drop out. And this is going to have to be thrown in between these two defenders here, okay? Obviously, you've got McKinnon now coming to the flat. And then you've got McColl coming up the sideline. So you have this deep safety, but you have all this space to work with. Like, there's so much space to work with on this play. And why is that? Why is that, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. You've got seven Steelers close to the original... Line of scrimmage, okay? That's a bad line, I apologize. But again, you're, you're seeing what it, what real play action can do. And why I've been pounding the table for the Chiefs to do real play action out of under center with a fullback. You have a guy in Mike Burton who is athletic that can make things happen. He can catch the ball and he can go too. We've seen the screens come in. But again, just a three-man route concept. You have the tight end, the fullback blocking, and Mahomes gets hit there. But again... All about finding that space. Tyreek does a great job of locating it, sitting down in it. Mahomes comes from 
his right delivers the ball to his left on a spot. Really, just a great job of executing this play right before he's about to get hit. And then, you know, Tyree Kill does his thing, gets pretty much back to exactly where he was before he decided to dip out of there. Uh, something that we're going to have to monitor going forward. I know that he's clearly turned around, so he doesn't know who's behind him. He's just trying to create space. Uh, that's something that Demarcus Robinson likes to do, and he's not nearly that level of athlete. So they have that to, within the organization, within the wide receiver room, is that they're always trying to find ways to get open, okay? Now, this is really where the offensive line get to take over, okay? They started to run the ball effectively, okay? What that running, running the ball does, you know, we've talked about creating a physical element to the game. The Steelers don't have a great run defense, and how was able Jarek McKinnon able to do this? This is a very simple concept, okay? So you're just going to have 12 personnel. Two tight ends. They're going to block, okay? Two wide receivers out here have this... Deep, deep safety shaded out to the uh, the offense's left, so you know you have what you're looking at. Basically divide this up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you have an eighth man coming in, okay? What does that mean? You shouldn't technically be able to run the ball that well, but the Chiefs' offensive line is going to create a little bit here. All right? This is what I'm talking about. This is just going to be a simple counter, and then Boom. Accelerate through the hole. Okay, we're going to see it on the uh, the flip side here. Just trying to identify something the Chiefs do very well. You get this double here, and then you just basically let TJ Watt do whatever he wants to. Just get in his way a little bit. Make sure he can't run it down from behind like he does later in the game. But Joe Tooney, great job here. You're going to see a little chip to the second level, Okay. Because there's always options off of these plays, typically, it's an excellent understanding that you know, 34 is kind of backing out. He's not coming downhill. You're just kind of waiting to see what Patrick Mahomes does. But this is just going to be a simple uh, counter from shotgun, okay? So the, it, it makes everyone kind of feel, as you can see with this handout here, kind of shifting out to their right. It makes it feel like it's coming this way, and then they come out of it the other way. But he, he doesn't do a whole lot. But this is what it does. Is it, you basically isolate these linebackers. And again, you're still isolating. You're creating this entire side of the field with the offensive line and, and the tight end. And, excuse me. So that's why you have him out here on TGY. Just basically isolate him. Now you have one, two, three guys that can't run down the play and that honestly can't really do much about this play before it gets going. And this is a really good job. Just boom. Boom. Block out a great job of turning the defensive tackle from Tooney here. And then, you know, Creed Humphrey is just going to take this guy for an absolute ride because he's that good. <laughs> Splane had no chance on that. Number 41 from the Steelers. Really, really well executed fit, run fit. And McKinnon's not even touched at all. I wouldn't call any of this. This is all run after. Uh, zero contact head up. The 11, 12, 13 yard run off of nothing. See, look, just takes it upfield. Find the hole and go. That's something that I think that Clyde sets up a little bit too much. I think he could do relatively the same thing in that situation, but we see him try to set things up too much instead of take say you know taking that counter, seeing that he doesn't have to manipulate anybody in the second level and kind of going. So uh, and this is the, the very next play. They ran right back to back and they were able to create chunk plays in the run game. So it was, it was really, really nice to see them get this offensive line moving and doing a really good job of selling it a little bit here. So you're going to see Kelsey do a good job of just, you know, doing what he does, finding the, the Chiefs use him as a, uh, you know, a, a defensive scout, essentially. He just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But this, good job just executing the run fits. And then McKinnon does a good job of accelerating into his changes of direction, into, into, into his cuts. Something that, again, Clyde doesn't do a whole lot because I think he's busy mentally trying to set everything up. So again, just a zone blocking scheme. But matching up one-on-one, -on -one, being able to overpower your guy one-on-one -on -one as an offensive lineman, you have to be able to do. Because if you don't, this you can't get to these linebackers, okay? They can't do that. And I like seeing them kind of pull Kelsey around into this hole, finding a cutback lane. So it allows 
Brown to not have to step with them. He can block down on Highsmith here, and then Kelsey can get up into the second level. And then that all creates this shift in, in, in the offense and in the defense. You have holes opening up everywhere. Like, there's just no one in the backfield. This offense creates such big plays that this should be a relative normal for them to see on every single play when they run it and they're executing their blocks well. This is a manipulation. He probably should have gone up here immediately because there's there's literally nobody, but he's manipulating Hayward, Hayward here. So he makes Hayward come out to the to his left, and that allows Tooney to really get his block down. But look at this. There's just... It's a huge open running lane, and McKinnon's going to accelerate back through his cut around the opposite side, make another guy miss, and go for 15 yards. That's a great play. It's a great blocking execution. This is something they need to do more often. And honestly, McKinnon has a, that acceleration through his change of direction that right now is getting in the way of Clyde Edwards-Alaire being a more productive back. He's not doing that as much as he did in college. And that's the reason I really want to see McKinnon get more run in this offense. And, and that go, brings us right into the next point I wanted to talk about. You know, I tweeted about it. The screen game for the Kansas City Chiefs was almost relatively nowhere to be seen in this, uh, this off offense most of the season. But now they're selling it. The offensive line has the chemistry. They have, you know, a guy in McKinnon who I really think can take advantage of a lot of these run lanes. That's not to say that Clyde, Daryl, or, you know, Derek Gore can't do it. All, of, all four of these running backs have shown the ability to take a screen that's well executed and take it for the distance. But this is what I'm talking about by execution and sell job. Look, there's no one giving this away. Right now, you're still showing contact. I mean, you have Creed kind of looking for it right now. But McKinnon looks like he's chipping. They're all selling this very, very well. And obviously, since you have routes behind it, you're taking a bunch of these defenders away from the play. So you have five defensive players here that are away from the play. You sell the block up front. You give Patrick Mahomes this giant pocket. You know, who knows what's going to happen on this play? You can't really see it until it's too late. And like I said, when you have screens that are executed well... This is what happens. Again, you separate. You create separation. And you know Kelsey does a good job of creating more contact downfield for him to work with. And if you're able to segment the, the offense and segment the field this way when you're creating these types of big explosive plays, that's what you're going to be able to do. And that's what this team now going into the postseason needs more than ever is because the screen game has been such a focal point of Andy Reid's entire offense, his entire career. Now I think they have this ability with the offense, offensive line gelling the way that it is. We've seen it work multiple times in this game where they took advantage of some of the aggressive nature of the Pittsburgh Steelers and they took it and used it against them. Great job. Again, acceleration, boom. And if, if you know, Hayward doesn't get off of this, like he's probably going to try to make some more guys miss to be running still. That would have been a lot of fun. Now we're going to get to Patrick Mahomes. The growth of Patrick Mahomes, everything that he's seen is really come into a culminating factor into the postseason. We've seen him try to struggle a little bit against some of the two high defenses that he's seen that he's seen. But right now, I think Patrick Mahomes has folded everything into his repertoire and he's understanding defenses better than we've ever seen it as his fourth year in the NFL starting. That should be a thing and it definitely is. It's more apparent now than it ever was. And I think that just little tiny things like this, understanding where everyone's supposed to be on the field, and just, again, creating a big play. A 15-yard play from just a swing pass to your running back. But what does this look like? So Mahomes has to digest this, okay? So 21 looks like he could be coming. You have all these guys that all of them could end up, you know, with the rusher. He's even kind of cheating inside a little bit, I think. So any one of them could, could end up rushing, right? So what the Pittsburgh Steelers actually do is they bring this guy off the off the edge here on the, the slot receiver. So what does this do? If you're just looking at this from a basic perspective, you just have these guys run clear outs essentially. You just run up field. And as soon as it does that, well, guess what? You have an open wide receiver because you or excuse me, an open player. You're going to have two guys that end up coming back, but they can't really get there because they have to run this way. Not fast enough to get there. Or 54, excuse me. Was the guy that didn't end up blitzing. But again, it's just creating space, understanding where to go with the ball quickly. And 
the mental part of Patrick Mahomes' game is always going to be the, the part that we didn't really know a lot about, okay? And we've seen, even last year, he said himself, he didn't understand defense a whole lot. I think we're seeing now, he understands what he's seeing. Especially, you know, he was so good against the Blitz because he offensively understood who was going to be open. Now, he understands defensively where the gaps are. And he's seeing the players, before he has any idea where he's going with the ball... He sees that defensive player coming from the slot. He knows, look, I got a wide open guy in the flat. I don't have to get this ball downfield. I don't have to force it anywhere. I have an outlet immediately for a big play. Like, that's just the generational, I mean, excuse me, the uh, the manipulation, the growth that Patrick Mahomes has shown over the course of this season mentally is more important than just about anything we've seen. This is a lot of fun to watch happen. I know that we're going to talk a little bit about Patrick Mahomes once again, escaping a clean pocket for no reason. I'm going to tell you why I think he did in just a second. But Demarcus Robinson, okay, could be really the collection of Demarcus Robinson, Byron Pringle, and McCole Hardman could be a collective breakout for the postseason. And one of the big reasons Mahomes can take this team to a Super Bowl, he's understanding now how to use some of these guys. And it's it's really it really is fun. You're just going to have basically this be a two-man option on this on this part of the field you're going to have rotating safeties okay so even against cover three if this were cover three uh, this is a way you can still beat that this corner route really post corner from demarcus robinson with essentially tyree kill running an angle route just to take these two safeties away is, is everything you need to see, okay? So this ends up being, you know, two deep safety. So you have rotation here. You have 23 in man coverage and 20, or whoever this is, in man coverage on Tyreek Hill. They're going to end up being behind the receiver because, like I said, you're going to have DeMarcus run this almost like a post corner. He's just going to kind of sell it to the inside, and you're just going to have Tyreek Hill angle to the middle of the safeties, okay? Force them to figure out who's going to take who because the speed is just there. And Mahomes is going to, you know, he's going to come out to his, to his right. But all because of this. They set this up, okay? They know that TJ Watt's a focal point. So they chip TJ, force him inside, and that's why Patrick comes out to his right. One, because he knows the, where he wants to go with the football. Based on the rotating safeties that he's currently seeing, he knows where he wants to go with the ball, okay? So here, he, sell, he stops, he waits for TJ to now come back inside, and he gets out. To use the angles against him he's got to come back off his block this way but he knows that he's going to have demarcus robinson closer this way now on this corner route this is an absolute seed to demarcus robinson with the safety closing in on him one of extremely impressive throws that patrick mahomes makes just look so easy on the run it's not easy to do this i couldn't even begin to fathom how to do it in any way shape or form at my age and i'm 30 years old you know i, I don't i'm almost 30 you know, i'm 29 but that's neither here nor there but again a good job to understand to use tj watts blocking his rush path or his rush path against him to make this throw a little bit easier because if you're throwing this ball from here that can be picked off a little bit better because you, you figure the trajectory of the ball if you're throwing it this way, some that guy that was underneath Demarcus Robinson is going to have a better chance to intercept that ball. But here, he creates a better angle and throws it right in on the money. Great job, great catch from Demarcus. Good job selling that route to the inside and creating another big play. And more, I think we're going to see more of these corner routes again because against cover two, you have this window on the corner of the field where the where the half safety is covering, and then you have the flat defender that could be uh, a, cho a choice defender where he's going to be in the flat, and you can make him in the flat if you create that window with the running back, okay? So you take that running back, and you can run these corner routes, and that's one of those cover two beaters that I really have talked about them using more. We've seen Byron Pringle run a couple of those corner routes, and now I think you're going to see them more often. Once again, you're going to see it here on the last play we're going to talk about, but Patrick Mahomes, the seed that he's going to throw here is, is incredible, but the processing, okay, going from his right, you're going to see he's reading right, stops, comes up left, breaks a little bit, and then just chucks this to, to McCole Hardman. He nearly takes it. He probably would have. I didn't get tripped up. But this is the route concept, okay? It's 
called a spot it's called a spot route essentially you typically want to see spot um, spot routes run from a bunch and that would be a little bit easier to do but they do it from under center and they m do it from a two by two they're going to motion travis kelsey from left to right and this is the concept he's initially reading to his right but you have the flat route from your running back you're going to have marcus kemp run the spot route which is just, just here in turn look for the football and you're going to have mccall hardman just run it that corner route okay so that's what this is. It's called spot, or really the, the concept that I focused on was the sale, was to the flat and to the corner. Then you add this little spot rod in here from this formation, okay? And this is, it becomes wide open because you have, to, it's second and seven. This isn't exactly um, a, a long situation, so you're not looking for the long receiver, and it puts defenders in a bind, okay? He's got to come here. He has to respect the corner, the flat route from the running back, given that McKinnon's already burned him a few different times. And they run the same thing on the opposite side, essentially. <laughs> a choice route from Travis Kelsey with a corner behind it. Safety is too deep on this one, but that's why you have Mahomes come from his right to his left. And it's just execution, okay? Execution, execution, execution. And this seed... That Mahomes is going to throw on the run again. From he was on his on the run from his right to Demarcus. Now he's going to be on his on the run from his left. Look at this. Nothing. Just his shoulders are still facing this the, this way of the field. They're perpendicular to almost where the ball's going. That's in, insane. And he makes it look simple. He's just he's literally moving sideways. Like he's not. There's no step into the throw. There's no turn with his shoulders. He just flips it. He just flicks it right, boom, straight. He doesn't even move forward. He just goes. And then, you know, McCall Harbin turns the Jets on. Spillane gets lucky there. So impressive what Patrick Mahomes did in this game. Just finding space, using the offensive line with him, and then taking these throws that typically are so difficult for a lot of other quarterbacks, and he does it better than anybody. That's just so much fun to watch, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching that back with me because I think this offensive performance from the Chiefs is really what we're going to hopefully see against the Bills, a defense that has is really, 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 really well coached. I think that they have good players. They don't have elite players at defense right now. Maybe Jordan Poyer, Trey Davis White's out. And like I said, they're well coached defense. I think their front is going to get some pressure, but if they do what they did against the Steelers with their front, I think you're going to see the same level of success against this Bills defense that's not going to blitz a whole lot. And when Patrick Mahomes isn't blitzed, right now, he's even better than he, he's way better than he used to be. When you blitz him, he's still lethal. But you keep him clean, keep him upright, guess what? This is going to be a, a game that Patrick Mahomes can win. All of these kind of things that we saw, the the, 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 the spot routes, the corners, the, the throws, the run game, all of these can really culminate into how the Chiefs win the Super Bowl. They continue to do this with the offensive line gelling the way that it is. There's no team that can stop them. Hope you guys enjoyed this. You guys, really, it's so much fun talking about football. I just It gets me giddy every time. I appreciate you joining me tonight. Have a great day. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.